Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and every month here on the channel, Plex, which is an awesome media serving application, does a sponsored video where we take a look at one of the many features that make up their very robust application. And today they've rolled out a new feature involving the Google Daydream system. And if you have been watching my channel, you know last week we did a review of this headset and the phone uh, that goes inside of it. And today we're going to be taking a look at something Plex is now doing with Google Daydream, which is bringing your Plex media server into virtual reality. You can watch uh, stuff on a big screen in this apartment setting here, and they also have a few other environments that we're going to explore. And what's really cool is you can bring friends in with you who are also connected to their virtual reality headsets and watch with them and talk to them while you all uh, take a look at media streaming from your Plex server. And it's really kind of a cool thing. And we're going to be uh, looking at all of this here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. As I mentioned, they do this every month here on the channel. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own and they are not reviewing this content before I upload it. I also wanted to let you know that I paid for the Google Daydream headset here with my own funds, but the phone inside of it, which is a Galaxy S8 from Samsung, is here on loan from Qualcomm because it shows off their uh, 835 Snapdragon processor. So with all that stuff out of the way, let's get this thing on and I'm going to show you what it's like to browse your Plex library in virtual reality. So here we are inside of the studio apartment scene that they've got. There's a couple of other scenes as well, and I can take things like the popcorn here and uh, throw it around. Uh, it uses the uh, Google Daydream controller here to navigate throughout the interface. And what I'm doing right now is casting this from uh, my uh, phone over to a Chromecast. So the field of view is not as uh, zoomed in on your screen as it is on mine. So the screen in front of me here is actually filling up a good portion of my field of vision. I would say it's probably uh, well over 100 inches in scale to me right now. It really looks pretty nice. And what I can do here with the controller uh, is on the capacitive section here, I just move my finger back and forth to make the screen larger or smaller, and I can also move it around the environment too. And if I put it in place here, I can, of course, look around here and see what else is going on. And what I'm going to do here is just click on the play button, and uh, what will happen here as the movie starts playing is the uh, blinds come down and it darkens up the scene here for me to uh, get a better view of the movie here. really works pretty nicely. I've got all of my uh, Plex information here that pops up on the side as well, so you get uh, all the things you might be familiar with. I can hit the uh, big button here on the remote to go back to uh, the navigation if I want and scroll around. I can even connect to other Plex servers that I have access to as well. So you get a lot of the functionality that uh, you might have experienced on some of your other Plex clients, but uh, now, of course, you're in virtual reality. But this is not the only uh, thing that you can use to watch the movies with. And if I uh, hit the center button here and go over to the gear icon right here, uh, we have some other options here. So they have a luxury apartment, which is what we're in now, but they also have a drive-in movie uh, scene here. So let's take a look at that. So here is the drive-in movie scene, and we're inside of a car here, and you can even honk the horn if you want to do something like that. I have nobody with me in the car, but as you'll see in a few minutes, you can invite friends in to watch with you, and it looks like a pretty nice evening for a drive-in movie. And I can go here and select what we were watching before. Uh, what's cool about this interface is that you can take the things that you're watching and uh, pop them down on the chair there for later. So I could uh, maybe watch this first, and then uh, when I'm done, I can go back and grab that other piece of media. So here's that thing starting up. I did find in the drive-in movie version here, you do have to look up a little bit more like you would if you were really at a drive-in theater. So this might put a little more strain on your neck than the uh, studio apartment might. But if I want to maybe watch this thing that I've queued up later here, I can just grab it from the chair, hit play, and uh, go ahead and watch that if I want. I also have the option to share my content with others. So if I wanted to let my friends know they can come in and watch with me, they can do that as well. Uh, like the other interface, you can zoom the uh, screen here in and out as well. So you have some options for that. And what's really cool about this is that there is also uh, the ability to watch uh, 3D and 360 degree movies on this as well. So let's take a look and see how you do that. All right, so we're in the last environment that they have available to us right now, which is called the void. And you can see it's just an area of blank space with a screen in front of us. And again, the screen is closer to me than it is to you. Now you'll see here we've got a 3D movie loaded up. This came off of a Blu-ray 
uh, 3D disc. And right now we've got images here side by side. It's not actually in 3D. And if I were to play this back here right now, you'd see uh, a double image. But what we can do is go over to this gear icon here. And uh, because this did not auto detect in its uh, metadata, we can correct for that just by going over here to st uh, stereoscopic format and selecting side by side. And when we do that, uh, the movie now becomes a 3D movie. And it looks pretty decent, actually. It's certainly a, a new way to watch 3D movies because a lot of the 3D TVs are no longer being sold. But uh, you can still get the 3D experience in here. Found it to be pretty good. The depth is not as uh, deep, perhaps, as I thought it might be, but it's still uh, definitely a 3D movie that I'm able to see inside of this headset, and it was kind of cool that they did that. Uh, likewise, if you have a 180-degree uh, movie or a 360-degree movie and you're not getting that projected out properly, uh, you can make that change there and uh, get the 360 or the 180-degree uh, movie working in here as well. So if you have some content that uh, is in uh, 180 or 360, uh, you can just go ahead and select that projection format and you'll get uh, it working properly with everything scaled to the right dimensions as well. Now, when you go into that 360 or 180 mode, uh, your scene will disappear because you're no longer looking at a 2D movie, but uh, you will get the full 360 degree experience. And the nice thing is now you can store all of that media inside of your Plex library. You can even set up a separate library for the 180 and 360 stuff that you could load up and go in and watch uh, with one single application and even stream it over the internet. Another cool thing about this, speaking of the internet, is that if you have friends who also have Google Daydream, they can join in and watch what you're watching uh, in real time and interact with you with voice. You can talk to them. Uh, the only downside is it kind of works like a walkie-talkie right now where you got to hold down the button to talk to them. But uh, it's really cool. You can actually interact with the people with you. Uh, three people can come in to join you for a total of four. And what's really cool is as they are talking to you, uh, you will hear them based on their position in the virtual space. So I had somebody from Plex over in California watching a movie with me. Uh, when he spoke and I was looking at the screen, I'd hear him out of my right ear. And and then when I turned to listen to him, I was hearing everything out of both ears, really very similar to what it might be like if he was actually sitting with me on the couch. Uh, equally interesting is that your avatar inside of this virtual environment uh, is tied in with your headset. So if I'm talking to him but looking at the screen, he'll see the side of my head, but I can turn to talk at him. And I can also wave my controller at him as well to do maybe a little body language as I'm uh, communicating with him as well. So really cool, I think, for a uh, first uh, effort here. It seems to be uh, a pretty solid offering here from Plex, and I really like the ability to be able to watch my own media uh, in a media format like this. When we looked at the Daydream headset the other day, we did take a look at uh, Netflix and YouTube where you can stream stuff from uh, their servers with this environment. Very similar uh, kind of experience, at least with Netflix. They put you inside an apartment, for example, but that's all of Netflix's stuff, not your media. Uh, now you can enjoy your media here in virtual reality. Uh, what's cool also about this system is that this is a feature available to everybody. You don't need to have a Plex Pass to use it. Uh, but if you do wish to share your media with others and have them stream in to watch with you, uh, you will have to have a Plex Pass for that. But uh, the enjoyment of the feature, just as you saw it here, as far as watching some movies and doing the 3D and the 180 and 360 stuff, uh, you can do all of that uh, without having to subscribe to the Plex Pass. But if you want to do that, you can use our uh, link down below and give it a shot if you want to try out some of the other Plex Pass features that we've covered in the past. So that's going to do it for this uh, new feature for Plex, the Daydream VR experience. You will need to have a Daydream compatible phone and a Daydream headset and controller. Uh, do check out my review that I did last week to learn more about the platform. I'm pretty impressed with it, but you do need a higher end Android phone to make it happen. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Steve Blixt, Stanley Taub, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.